um it takes back to takes us back to the basics when we first believed when we realized what Jesus was in our lives and how good it was because everything we did um we played for it and we asked him to guide us. That's why I love the old hymns because those are the songs that we sang from the very beginning. And so they are very um, central to our hearts and they speak to us in a very, very important way. But um, yes, our in our worship today, we invited the Holy Spirit to come and be with us always and let us always remember to do that so that wherever we are there will be um, an atmosphere of peace and a, 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 an atmosphere of um, presence of God in our lives and um, remind ourselves all the time that Jesus is our comfort he is our shelter and he's our refuge, and he will be our strength in whatever we need. And indeed, what a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. Let us remember to always, in whatever circumstances we are going through, to ask him to be there with us, to be our right heart, to guide us, to control the wheel of our lives. And so that we don't carry the burdens and the griefs and everything that we in our human nature tend to carry, but give everything to him and um, he will guide us. He will be our help in everything that we do. Yes, let us remember every um, morning to remind ourselves that what a friend we have in Jesus let us pray as we invite our Pastor Julia to give the word for today. Let us pray. God, we come before you again. We place Pastor Julia before you. You know you have prepared her to give us the word. You have filled us with the Holy Spirit to guide us in whatever that she says may it resonate with each and every one of us. May each and every one of us get a word that is fit for us at this time in our lives. Guide us, guide her to give us the word as you have given it to her. And it, it shall empower us, it shall encourage us, it shall grow us, for we know that only in the word do we get fulfillment and um full connection with you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Over to you, Pastor Julia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we even thank you, Lord God Almighty. Yes, Lord, that's why we're here, Father. Because you are our God and you are our Father. Lord, you are sovereign and you're above all, Lord God. You are the creator to everything. To us, Lord, we are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works in you, Christ. That's why we feel privileged to be in your hands, even as you continue to mold us, to squeeze us out and to make us your perfect workmanship. Unless you make us, we cannot be. So Lord, we thank you even as we come round about one another to worship you. It is our way of coming and our way of your molding of us so that we can become vessels of your use, Lord. Children that please you. Unless you build us and correct us and perfect us, Lord, we cannot be perfect. We are only perfect in you. That's why we bow before you in worship this morning, round about one another. Lord, that we can be those vessels of use that you have created. We thank you for this morning, Lord, 
and the thankfulness of hearts that Lord we pour before you. It is because we are we have recognized that we are not unless you are our God. The Bible says elsewhere that what do we have that you did not give us? What is it that we can hold and say that we worked for it or that we gained it? What is it? It is is it our lives? Nobody can give anybody life. God, you are the giver of life. You are the creator. Who can give us what things we hold in our hands, Lord? We cannot. We do not have the capacity even to hold them in our hands. Father, we thank you. All the things that we worked for and we held in our hands, they have all gone one time or the other. But Lord, what you gave us, that we still possess, that we still hold dear, because when you give us, my Lord, it is with finality that you give us. We just feel like we want to thank you and worship you this morning for what you are and for what you've given us, our God. We just feel like, Lord, we are thankful. Yes, indeed, we share and we echo the sentiments of our sister Zipporah that, Lord, we are thankful. Lord, even when we are not perfect, but yet our hearts are thankful, our God. Our hearts are thankful. Our hearts are thankful. Our hearts are thankful. Lord, we, are, we approach you with thankfulness and we say thank you for all you've done. For what you are to us, Lord, we are thankful. This morning, this part of the day, Lord, we are thankful. We are thankful for what you've done for us, Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Just feel like you could continue worshiping the Lord this morning. But let us just go to the word the Lord has given us. Because the Bible says that by his word, we shall live in the Lord he is giving us. He spoke to the children of Israel just before they crossed over to Canaan in the book of Deuteronomy. And he told them, when you cross over, you shall not live by the things that you find there. As much as the Lord had given them milk and honey, it was his promise. And when God promises, he fulfills. So when he says, I'm, give, I'm sending you to, to go to the ladder cross that has A, B, C, D, it's true, those things are there. Yes, that word is true. But guys, we have to, we have to, we have to align with God to be able to receive them and so that they can be of value to our lives. So he told them, go, and when you go, you shall live in that land by the words that I have given you. Moses would speak to them over and over just because they, before they crossed over. Moses would, be, would, would remind them the words of the law that he had spoken to them over a period of a long time. Before the very last days, Moses would remind them. Why is that? Because church, like them, we, we forget. We hear the word, but that word comes and it, it stays in. But let me tell you, and that is now part of our message this morning. The word comes, but church of God, don't bring those children of Israel, the people of Israel, because they are just like us. They are just us. We are just the same material. Do you ever ask why they would receive such powerful words of, 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 of deliverance from the Lord. But then the next the next day, they are there, they are quarreling, they are grumbling against Moses, they have turned away from God. Do you ever ask yourself, why is that? Why does a good God help you so much? And then the next minute you rebel. You know that's us, that's how we are created. We are wired like that. That's how the human nature is wired. When I was reading, when I was younger, reading the Bible, I would ask, how does a good God help you that? Why would they do that? I don't know about you, but I've asked myself that question so many times. Why did they, why do you get helped by God so much? But then the next minute you forget and you turn back and you start grabbing to that God. So and then I realized that's part of our message this morning, that that's how humankind is wired. Church of God, we are wired. It's called what we call default systems of the humankind. Our default systems, we default to to, to the flesh, we default to evil, we default to sin. Our bodies are wired to sin. That is how, that's how you find in Genesis chapter number three, we fell to sin. And so our bodies, ourselves, in just the way we are, it is very quick for you, you are body to pull you and to go to the other side and to do the things that happen and that go around in the things of the flesh. That's the default systems of the human body, of the human being. That's how we are defaulted. And that's why church will find it's so easy 
to be triggered unless I'm going to go to that in a minute. When we learn this way that we are learning now, the Lord helps us to start to overcome these things. Otherwise, it's so easy, even you and me, when we are just the way we are, that you are triggered by something and off you go. And off you go. That is the default system that we are wired in. So because the fresh speaks so loud, unless the, spread, the fresh is suppressed by a higher power, the fresh tends to speak and to pull all the time. It's like it's screaming to you and speaking to you. And that's why, church of God, you will be seeing that as much as we pursue, times come that you feel that way that we are wired, it still takes effect. I want to go quickly to the book of John, chapter number 12, if you have your Bible. Um, I'm going to go and read. I'll, I'll read two scriptures. John 8, in the book of John, let's go and read. Um, and the Lord will help us this morning in our journey of faith. John 8. Verse number 28, John 8, 28, the Bible says, John 8, 28, the Bible says, so Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am he. And the Bible continues. So when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own. Jesus says, I do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. This is Jesus himself saying very powerful words. Jesus speaking very, very powerful words. And he says, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know. Church, hold it there and let us go to the book of John, just ahead there, chapter number 12. And verse number 31. John 12 and verse number 31. And the Bible says, Now is the time for the judgment on this world. Now the priests of this world will be driven out. 32. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Let's read that again. Jesus would say very powerful words. And he would say that now, Pastor, I want you to realize verse number 31. Now is the time for the judgment on this world. Jesus speaks very powerful words, which when we understand these words, we shall live a life of nothing but just miraculous kind of sign. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Sometimes I like when we come around and we define words. The word now. Now. The word now. Jesus would say now. He says it's the time for the judgment of this world. I think I'm just looking at a, a, a bit of grammar, grammar and words. He says so now is this time we are in. It's the time for the judgment. The word judgment, we're still studying the word judgment. And the word judgment means cases have been decided. Means Judgment means we are at that point where by now we are going to know who is, what is where. In a, For example, we say in a scenario where there, there, there's a case, there are two situations where things have to be decided. It's at that moment of decision making, a time that makes us where is which, who is the winner, who is not the winner, who is right, who is wrong. It's a time to decide things. So Jesus said it's the time for the judgment on this world. And he says, now the priests of this world will be driven out. He says with the finality, the prince of this world, after the judgment, then the prince will be driven out. And then he says, when the prince is driven out, and now, he says, and now, when I am lifted up from the earth, when the prince is judged of this world, Jesus says, something will happen. When judgment comes, and then you understand that, and you take responsibility. He says, and I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. So, church, this this has been, the Lord has been helping us here this, these days. He says, for us to be able to lift Jift Jesus up, he says, there's a formula I want to give you. Number one, 
time is now. The prince of this world has been judged, has been driv driven out. So his error, his things that he does have been judged. I want us to look at the word judgment just for a moment. That's why we are very thankful when we are listening to very powerful worship this morning. When we are saying you are present, Lord. When your presence comes, it means there is something that what someone was there has been driven out and in his praise then comes the presence of the living god that is what we sang and we said that your presence lord your presence when the presence is in there is the vacuum of everything else that was there before so when i am driven when i am lifted up from this earth i will draw now let us go back to the book of john where we started john 8. when you have lifted up the son of man then you will know. Church, I want to speak to us about just what Jesus would have meant. When he says, I'm, when I'm lifted up, then you will know. Let us just stop there. He says that the, judge, the, the, the God of this world has been judged. So when he has been judged, when you lift Jesus up, then you will know. And I ask myself, <laughs> would you want to get to a place where you want to see what it means to, to, for Jesus to make you know? what it means for Jesus to be lifted up by you on this earth. You know, Jesus says, when you lift me up, then you will know. Then you will know. And I thought, Lord, Father, would you want to teach us to know what it means? So how does it look like to know what, how it is? What is it that when we lift Jesus up, then we know? What will we know? Number one, I want to go back to Psalm 103, which was read by Zipporah earlier in this sheet. Psalm 103. Psalm 103 is a powerful psalm that David would sing. And David, let me just quickly go there. David would sing this psalm and he would say that praise the Lord my soul and all my innermost being, praise his holy name. Verse number two, praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. David would sing this verse this chapter is in my notes to read this morning. So when I heard our sister read, I was saying, wow, this is what the Lord would do. This is what the Lord would confirm when he is encouraging and edifying us. So David would say, praise my Lord. Why, what is David saying? That when I lift you up, Lord, then I will know. David says through this song that he says, if I lift my Lord up, who has judged the world and who has driven out the prince of this world. So then David would know what it means for the prince of peace to be driven out. When he is driven out, then he would know then what it means to lift the name of the Lord our God on high. David would know. So he would say, forget not all the benefits of the Lord when he is now sovereign to everything. And when the prince of peace who has captured, who had cap, 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 put me to captivity. When he is driven out and the Lord takes over and I lift them up, this is what will happen. Church, this is what will happen. So he says, forget not all his benefit. Number one, he says, who forgives all your sins? When the Lord has judged, he has judgment upon the prince of this world. Then it is the time you realize what we talk about forgiveness of sins. You discover, you experience what it means to experience a forgiveness of sins. David says, I don't want to forget that there was a time that I was lost and now I am found. There was a time I was blind, blinded by the judgment by the God of this world, but now he is driven out. When he was driven out, now I can see. When he was driven out, now I can hear. When he was driven out, now I can talk. I have a voice. I have, there is there's someone from within me that speaks out. There is someone from within me that prompts me to speak. David, David would sing and say, who forgives all your sins and he gives you, he makes you know what it means to experience the Lord. He heals, number one. So we are saying, forgives all your sins. So just we started by saying that we are wired. This, the default systems of the humankind is when the sin element within us 
speaks so loudly. That is the default system. But when Christ came, he judged the prince of this world who, through whom we in the book of Genesis 3, we all fell, every human, Gen Romans 3, 23, for we have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. That is the default system. But Christ says that he came and he gave us life. So now we have hope. So number one, who forgives all your sins? So the default system where we are defaulted to sinfulness has been judged. The sinfulness within the world has been judged that ruled us. And now today, David sings, David sings and says, he forgives all my sins, forgives all my sins. So now today I can start free and I can sing in freedom. The default system to that evil element of sin has been judged. So what did Jesus mean when he says that he has judged the God of this world. Number one, judgment of the God of this world means, number one, sinfulness was judged. So church, through Christ our Lord, we have gained the righteousness of God and you can possess the righteousness of God through confessing this name, confessing the works of the cross which Jesus accomplished for us, confessing that, believing in Jesus, you possess the righteousness of God. And so that sinfulness was judged. So when you are a believer church, we, we receive the righteousness of God and we started to declare that we are children that are born of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am righteous in Christ my Lord. You speak it, you believe it, the sinfulness that was in this world is judged, has already been judged. But what are we supposed to do? You sing it, you believe it, it starts to take effect in your life. What else did Christ judge? David sings and he says, who heals all your diseases. David is singing to himself and to his soul. And he is telling his soul that all you, my soul, my innermost being, forget not all the benefits of the Lord. Forget not the Lord who heals all your diseases, you soul. Do not forget the Lord who judged the diseases of this world. That's what David is saying. There is a time that judgment was judged. So that judgment put the word disease. David would say, who heals all your diseases, first three of Psalm 103, who heals all your diseases. Jesus in John 12 and verse number 31, he would say, now is the time for judgment. Now is the time for every sickness, every disease, every illness. Jesus would say, is the time for that judgment. It is the time to overpower it. It is the time to overtake it. It is the time to drive it out. So when Jesus says that he drove it out, so what does that mean? That disease was driven out. So David had captured that in the days that he lived. And he saw the Lord in the spirit and he spoke of the Lord through whom every disease has been judged. So when Jesus says that the God of this world has been judged, has been driven out, so put in that place where there's judgment, that sickness that torments you, that ailment that torments you, others that it has been driven out, that it has been judged. And so what, I, what is it for you and me to do? For you and me is to speak what Christ has done for you, is to understand what Christ has done for you, to understand that that sickness, that joint pain, that headache, that abdominal pain, that whatever it is, has already has already been judged, has already been driven out. So what is it for you and me to do is to believe it, is to, re to receive it from the spiritual point of view, to speak it, church, every day, every morning, that the godlessness of this world, sickness and disease has been judged. It is for you to believe it, to pray it, to sing it, to vaporize it, and to even, as if it was a headache, to just get hold of your headache and to declare headache, you have been judged, you have been driven out. My body has nothing from the evil kingdom. You have already been judged out. That is what David would capture. And church, the Lord wants us to capture that fact. He wants us to capture that truth so that you can receive deliverance. Because all what is tormenting us, all what is going on around us has already been, been driven out. But now you're going to call it by name because you know as much as I know. You know as much as I know. You want to take away the word judgment and put that situation in there. Then you are going to declare that you have already been driven out. You have already been driven out. 
you have already been driven out. Sickness and disease, you have been driven out. All the kinds of failure and poverty, you have been driven out. Everything that has been tormenting him, you have been driven out. Jesus said it, and he said, now is the time. So church, now is the time to declare. Now. It's not tomorrow or the day after. Now is the time. And it could be a family situation because we say that we are, we are wired to Genesis chapter number three, wired to that element of sinfulness. But now Jesus comes to give us a formula and to say he has already judged the world. So those default systems that you tend to want to default to have already been judged. Church, I realize how true this is. Do you realize it as much as I do? How true this is. It is when you see, and church, we must, we say here, we come here and we say we have to be truthful with ourselves. Every time, you know, as much as we are still working in this fresh, and you realize that the default systems are at work, it is when you see that that disease starts to spring up, you must know that the default systems are at work. And so now the fresh, which is our body, has already caved in to us that way, where disease comes and harbors in our bodies, where that sickness, when that sickness harbors in, when that hatred, when that, 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 that poverty mentality comes and caves in. That is the default systems of this body of humanity. When it comes in, when that, whatever it is, when that situation in the family, when there is that corrosion in the family, when there is that shame in the family, in your life, when there is that, whatever it is in your life, when you see that is operational, you must now understand. That is why you still in the human, the default systems are at work and church. Do you analyze yourself as I do? And do you realize that the default systems, they are always screaming, 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 screaming. That is why when you see that things are not working, there is a place that the default systems are pulling apart. They are squeezing, they are pulling, they are drawing you from all sides, the default systems. It is the time to sing the song of David. When the default systems are pulling you farther and apart, when you see the hatred, when you see things arising, when you see decisions that you have to make that you can't make them, when you see that confusion, when you see things in the family, when you see things in your life, you are at a crossroad. You see there are things from the default systems that are screaming, church, you sing the song of David. It is the time to sing a hundred, some hundred and three. It is the time when you see that in the family, that child and that child, they are pulling each other. It is the time to sing a hundred, some hundred and three. When you see that in your mind, you see things, you see, oh yes, it's when you start to consider, oh yes, oh yes, that is what he said. Oh yes, why did he say that? The default systems are at work, church. It is the time to sing the song of David. It is the psalm, time to sing Psalm 103. When you realize, oh, when you see, oh, what did they say? Now it has started to anger me. Psalm 103 comes into play. The default systems are at work. The default systems are at hard. When you hear that, let, us, let me read one more. Our time goes very fast. Who redeems your life from the pit and it crowns you with love and co with compassion. Who redeems your life. Who redeems means who buys back, who pulls you out from the pit. Jesus judged that pit. Jesus judged the occurrences of that pit. That pit, we say it screams at you, still drawing you towards the pit. But it is the time David would say, my soul, my soul, my soul, you've been delivered from the pit. You have to rise up, declare, stand on it, and you have to speak to the situation. You have to say, no, my body is not wired to that default system. That is why we must remain sober. We must be, remain alert. Like we said the other day, with, it is, I, am, I am quoting First Peter, I think, 5 and 7, which says that that pit that David would sing to, it is crawling around. It is the enemy. He's crawling around like an enemy to default you back to the systems that we are wired. David would sing the song. And he says, who crowns you with love and compassion, Verse number five, who satisfies you with, the, with, with desire, your desires with good things. He satisfies you with the good things. You see, the default systems would pull you back. And I love when Jesus would even teach the Lord's prayer. And in the Lord's prayer, he would say, in the Lord's prayer, he would say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Down there, he would say, and deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us. This is what David is singing. Deliver me from the evil one. What does that mean? Church, every time we are saying, deliver us from the evil one, do you just want to take it back 
to the level where you are and you see yourself and you see whereby there is a fight there is a rage there is a there is there is that fight within you the evil there is a there is a, there is a pulling apart whereby deliver us from the evil one the evil one is still attracting he is pulling and then jesus would teach us to say father you have already judged and driven him out. Deliver us who have already redeemed us from that pit of destruction, from that pit of my flesh. You have already delivered us. So church is a powerful prayer. And let me tell you, I thought about this. You know, the default systems that we are talking about, deliver us from the evil one. Jesus would know that that one would be knocking at your door of your body, of your mindset. There would be knocks. There would be screams. There will be little lights that are pulling you, that are attracting you. And that's when your body, yourself, your mind defaults to those systems. But Jesus would say, deliver me, Lord, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, so that I'm not drawn, so that I'm not carried away, so that I'm not pulled apart, so that, Lord, deliver me. David would say, you have redeemed my life from that pit. It is a prayer of every day and church when we do we shall become vessels of noble use we shall become vessels because we shall win the fight we shall win the things that are pulling us apart you shall be victorious when those temptations when the trials when the challenges when the enticements come when the default systems of our flesh come along your way you shall be able to lift up you have spirit you shall be lifting up like david would sing and would would say you have redeemed me from the pit of anger you have redeemed me from the pit of hatred you have redeemed me from the hate of disease you have redeemed me from the pit of confusion you have redeemed me from the pit of of, of ungodliness you have redeemed me this is what david is saying that lord for my soul you know there are times you have to preach to us david is preaching to himself here you know psalm 103 you can read it when you have a chance david is speaking to himself he is speaking to himself. He's saying, and um, praise the Lord, my soul, my soul, and my innermost being. Church, the best preacher of all is yourself. The most powerful is yourself. Because you know, as much as David knows, as much as I know, you know your vulnerability. You know the default systems that are pulling you apart. Only you can experience only you are in the situation. Only you can rise up and stand strong and say that forget not the benefits of my Lord who says, and I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, you will know. He says, when you lift me up, you will know. Jesus says, you will know. You will know that he has power to overcome the things of the flesh, to overcome the things of the pit, to overcome the things that govern the default systems of my flesh. The Savior has redeemed me from all of them, and I am an overcomer in all of them. So church, what does that mean? That when you see that situation that is approaching, that is making you start to think, is that A, is that B, default systems are at work. You must rise higher than them. You must rise above them. You must work for reconciliation. You must work for the power that God has released to bring healing upon your life, to bring wholeness, to bring life, to speak life, to release life. You must receive it. And you know what? church when we are in the fresh we must rise up and speak above that fresh above that mind that is speaking we must rise up how do we rise up church we rise up by action we rise up by action and we go above that situation whatever it is what like whatever it is that is pulling you apart you rise up above it were you supposed to rise up above and go and bless someone go and bless that someone go and bless them were you supposed to rise up and speak a word of blessings over that person speak a word of blessings over that sub person were you supposed to rise up and text someone and tell you i love you and god bless you and god loves you is that what it, it means then rise up above that that devote system rise up above that devote system and tell them god bless you god loves you 
God is with you. Are you supposed to rise up? And when you leave, you when you lift Christ on the earth, are you supposed to do something and release that that blessing for that person who they are far away? Maybe they are overseas. Maybe wherever they are, is that what you're supposed to do? Then rise up above the situation and do a church of God. Stretch your head over someone. That is what it means. You rise up above the default systems and you lift up the name of the Lord our God on high, and then you will know. You will know. I want to finish there because we can't. We can go on and on. But I want to finish where you will know when you lift the Son of God, when you lift Jesus in this life, and who takes preeminence in this flesh, and then you will know. You will know who he is. You know, I am still trying to understand what it means to know who Jesus is in your life. Church of God, you will never be the same again. But the default systems cannot work alongside knowing who Jesus is. They don't work together. They don't work together. Something has to give way. And Jesus said he has judged the world and driven them out. So it is his time. It is his priority. It is his time to, to, to occupy everything. And then you will know. Church, you will be a reconciliator. You will be a restorer. You will be calling out. You will be speaking. And that God, you will know who he is. You will know. Church, you will know. In your circumstance this morning, this time of the day, I don't know who you are, where you are at at life. I know where you are at. I want to pray this morning that may you know what it means for the Lord God, our God, to be lifted up in your life. May we know what that means. May you experience what it means to have the Lord lifted in your life. May you experience what it means to understand that judgment of this world, the prince of this world has been judged and driven out. May you know what it means for Jesus to be lifted up in your life. May you see it. May you experience it this morning. May you act as you're supposed to act. May you lift him, up, lift him up on high. May you demonstrate him. May you prove him. May you talk him. May he be real, even as David sang. And he says, who satisfies your desires. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We are singing the psalm of David, Lord. And we are playing, Lord God Almighty, that we may live truly to who you are. Father, in our areas, in our very personal lives, inside our very personal lives, Lord, may we know what it means to have you lifted up in our lives, to have you in our lives lifted up higher than the default systems that we have been wired in. Lord, may we demonstrate, may we experience what it means to have you in our lives, Lord. Round about us, in our families, families here and families round about the world. May we experience, Lord, May you take preeminence in our lives. May we be filled with who you are, Lord God Almighty. You who rose up above every default systems of this life, Lord, and you drove out the godlessness of this world. And you asked us to lift you up on high, on the earth, on this life, on this day, when we are alive. When we are breathing, when we are speaking, when we still have the chance, Lord, may we know what it means to lift you on high. And Father, when we do, may we see the results, Lord God Almighty, results in our lives, in our relationships, in our families, here and abroad, extended and nuclear family, all out about us, my Father. May we know, may we see results, even as we see the demonstrations of what it means to have you lifted up in this life. When we lift you, when I lift you, Lord, by the way I live, by the way I talk, by the way I act, Lord, may we know today in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we thank you, we bless you, in the mighty, powerful, loving name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray when we believe. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Back to your sister Zipporah. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for that powerful word. Indeed, the prince of this world has been chased away and our role is to accept Jesus and open our hearts to Jesus and he will guide us. What a powerful word. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Julia, for that. 
and that's our player today. Um, our time is almost up, and um, I think this is a, a reminder about the prayer and fasting from Wednesday. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, I don't know for those who can make it, we shall meet together and conclude at 117 King William in the city. We shall conclude together. On behalf of all of us, those within and we and far away, we shall just declare the word of God as the word is saying. He says, yes, that's exactly what we shall do. We shall lift him on the earth and mm -hmm. then we shall know so what we shall do. So God bless mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So remember that fasting from Wednesday and um the end of the fasting on Friday night and um, the usual um, meeting on Saturday, um, still at 177 uh, King William Street in the city. Thank you. And um, may you all have a blessed day and um, may God, Jesus Christ prevail in our lives. And let us say the grace and now, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and kindness shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall live in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye.